John Wall is a five-time NBA All-Star who averaged 20 points per game last season. This year, even though he's healthy, the Rockets are paying him $44 million to not play, and Wall's contract is considered the worst in the NBA. In this video, we'll talk about the complicated life of John Wall, his rise to stardom, the Supermax contract he signed, and the injuries that ruined his career. Crazy J and the rocky road from a criminal to the number one pick. In 2015, when Wall was named an all-star starter, a reporter asked him what he would do if he weren't playing in the NBA. Deadpan and completely serious, Wall answered that he would be dead or in jail, just like his father. His dad, John Wall Sr., had already spent several years in prison for a second-degree murder before John's birth in 1990. In 1991, three weeks after John's first birthday, his father robbed a store at gunpoint and was charged with armed robbery. During his early childhood, John would see his dad only on Sundays for one hour when he and his family made their weekly trip to the penitentiary. When John was nine, his father was released early from prison because he had a terminal form of liver cancer. He died a month later when his entire family was on vacation during their first happy moments of real family life. John still keeps the Randy Moss jersey his father wore when he died and the loss of his dad filled him with anger and rage, and John became a wild child. John grew up in North Carolina, in a neighborhood where drugs, guns, and violence are an everyday occurrence. Without a father and a mother who worked multiple jobs to support her kid, John had a lot of time to do dumb stuff. He constantly got into fights and arguments and was doing petty crimes. At 13, John started to break car windows, steal cars, and he was kicked out of almost every basketball team he played in due to his temper. Other kids started to call him Crazy Jay, and he did everything he could to justify his nickname. Wall had bullets fired at him twice and even fired back on one occasion. As a high school sophomore, his family moved to Raleigh, North Carolina, where John tried out for Broughton High School. Despite an impressive showing on the court, he didn't make the varsity team because of a bad attitude. So he transferred to a nearby Word of God Christian Academy high school. It was his third high school in three years, and he was still this foul-mouthed, incorrigible kid who would cuss at teammates and coaches and act out as soon as he got a bad call. His mom did everything she could to knock some sense into him, and she even kicked him out of the house and sent him to a group home for a few weeks. Nothing helped until when she spent her last $200 to buy John new basketball shoes so he could go to an AAU tournament she even had to shut down the electricity in her apartment to do so. There were no lights for a day or two. That was it. If my mom was going to do that for me, I was going to make sure she was satisfied for life, John said, and started taking basketball seriously. When he got a call he didn't like, there was no more cussing and yelling. Instead, he'd just give the ball up and channel his aggressiveness on defense, an attitude that helped him make the NBA all-defensive team in 2015. With his newfound discipline, John was ranked 20th best high school player in the country as a junior. He was ranked number one as a senior, after averaging 20 points, nine assists, and eight rebounds per game. However, despite his success, it was hard for him to get rid of old habits. Wall and his friend were charged with breaking and entering an abandoned home during his senior year, and Wall escaped prison because it was his first recorded felony. But because he was a speed demon that could dribble the ball from one end of the court in 3.5 seconds and was tough as nails defensively, he could still choose where he wanted to go to college. And because he was a big fan of John Calipari and his Memphis team that went to the NCAA title game with Derrick Rose, Wall joined Coach Cal at Kentucky in 2009. There, he teamed up with DeMarcus Cousins, Eric Bledsoe, and Patrick Patterson, all future first-round picks. Wall led UK in scoring and assists, averaging 16-6 and six with two steals. And even though they lost in the Elite Eight, John was considered the most talented collegiate player and got selected first overall in the 2010 draft by the Washington Wizards. Becoming an All-Star After winning the Summer League MVP, Wall scored a triple-double within the first two weeks in the NBA and he finished second in Rookie of the Year voting behind Blake Griffin. He averaged 16.3 points and 8.3 assists as a rookie and almost identical numbers as a sophomore after he missed the first 33 games of the season with a knee injury. The Wizards were 5-28 during that stretch and went 24-25 when he returned. In his third season, the Wizards drafted Bradley Beal, but other than him and Wall, their overall roster was mediocre at best and Washington missed the playoffs again. In his fourth year, 
After he signed an $80 million extension, Wall kept improving. He averaged career-high 19.3 points and 8.8 .8 assists per game, with 35% shooting from deep, which was the biggest Achilles heel of his early career. He also slowed down his game significantly and was no longer going 100 miles an hour, running into whoever was under the basket. With his newfound poise and an improved jumper, he was selected as an all-star, where he also competed in the slam dunk contests, which he won. More importantly, the team finally made the playoffs, and Wall led Washington to their first playoff win in nine years, before they lost to the Pacers in the conference semis. Continued excellence and signing the Supermax. In 2015, Wall was named an all-star starter and was widely regarded as the top five point guard in the NBA due to his stellar two-way play. John made the all-defensive team and had 10 assists per game. The first of three consecutive years, he averaged double-digit assist numbers. John dished a Wizards playoff record 17 assists in game two of the series sweep of the Raptors, before falling in six games during a second round series against Atlanta, in which he missed three games due to a hand injury. In the offseason, Wall had procedures on both of his knees and returned in superb form, averaging 20 and 10 for the year, becoming the franchise leader in assists in the process. However, the Wizards had a 500 record at the end of the season and were three wins short of the eighth place and a playoff berth. In 2017, the first season under a new coach, Scott Brooks, John had the best year of his career, posting career highs in scoring, shooting efficiency, assists, and steals. He notched a career-best 52 points against Orlando and 20 assists against Chicago, and finished the season with 23 points, nearly 11 assists, and two steals per game which earned him a nod to the All-NBA third team. It seemed that this was the year that everything was finally going to click for the Wizards, with their starting five healthy and playing well throughout the year, especially their two main stars, Wall and Beal. Washington finished fourth in the East and avenged the playoff loss to the Hawks from the previous year. In the sixth and deciding game, Wall played probably the best and most complete game of his career, scoring 42 points, providing eight assists, and four steals to close out the series. In the second round, the Wizards played an epic seven-game series against Isaiah Thomas and the Boston Celtics. In game six, with Boston leading by two in the final seconds, Wall made the biggest shot of his career, a game-winning three that forced game seven. Unfortunately for Wall and the Wizards, he didn't play up to par in game seven, and the Celtics won the game. Nevertheless, it was clear that John had raised his level of play at the age of 26, and everybody thought his best years were ahead of him with many more All-Star and All-NBA selections. A year before his current max deal was about to expire, the Wizards offered John a Supermax, and Wall happily autographed a four-year, $170 million contract extension. Injuries and the worst contract in the NBA. Wall had persistent knee problems throughout the 2018 season, but he was still averaging close to 20 points and 10 assists in 41 regular season games, and made the All-Star team. The Wizards sneaked into the playoffs as the eighth seed, but they expectedly lost in their first round to the first-seeded Raptors in six games, despite a formidable showing from Wall. In 2019, John started the year well, averaging 20 points and nine assists. But after a recurring pain in his left heel, he decided to have surgery and miss the rest of the season. However, that's when the real problem started. Wall first developed an infection from that surgery, and then suffered a ruptured Achilles tendon when he slipped in his home. He missed the rest of the season as expected, but with surgery complications and the Achilles injury, he didn't play a single game in the following year as well, which was the first year of his Supermax. Wall later revealed that the infection was so bad that at that point, there was a chance his foot might get amputated. But he did recover, and he looked good during the workouts prior to the 2020-2021 season. And then, the Wizards' front office decided to cash in on his all-star resume, and they traded him for Russell Westbrook, who had a falling out with the Rockets. In Houston, Wall got to the team that was going through James Harden drama and his request to be traded, which did ultimately happen, and the Rockets were destined for the lottery. John averaged 20 points and 7 assists in 40 games, proving that there is still juice left in the tank and that he can play at a high level. However, he did lose some of his athleticism and speed, his defense wasn't as good as before, and he was never a good shooter to make up for the loss in physical ability. 
With a $44 million salary this season and a $47 million player option for next year, his contract is currently untradeable. And because the Rockets are now all about developing young talent and tanking to acquire more young talent, they said thanks, but no thanks. John was shelved for the season, meaning that the Rockets are paying him $44 million and would rather have him sit at home than let him play for the team. Legacy When John Wall signed that Supermax deal in the summer of 2017, many argued that it's too much to spend on a below-average shooter with glimpses of superstar talent. But he is not a top 10 or top 15 player in the NBA. The Supermax was designed to make it easier for small market teams to retain their best players. But so far, it has mainly proven inefficient. Primarily, it eats a massive percentage of the cap space that only a handful of the biggest stars actually deserve. Teams are thus pushed into a very ungrateful position in which they have to overcommit to their franchise players like John Wall. Or they have to tell him, hey, we know you've been loyal to us and are a five-time All-Star, but you're not really worth that money. It's not that Wall is a terrible player, far from it. His speed and transition, the ability to create pressure on the defense with his first step, and his unselfishness made him a constant threat on offense. And defensively, he was always among the best players at his position. If we look at his peak years, his production and efficiency are very similar to pre-injury Derrick Rose and Russell Westbrook, players he shares many similarities with. While many people will say that his contract is the worst contract of this century, that's really unfair and simply not true. Wall's extension is not even the worst in Wizards history. If we look at how much money Washington gave to Gilbert Arenas a season before his knees gave out and his guns went wild. Numerous injuries and bad management influence the fact that his Wizards have been a mediocre team for years. If Wall remained healthy after 2017, we would probably be talking about a first ballot Hall of Famer based on his stats and all-star appearances. Wall's career averages of 19 points and 9 assists are the same numbers Hall of Famer Isaiah Thomas averaged for his career. And even though he's making $44 million a year for doing absolutely nothing, John's career still isn't over. And I'm sure he'll make a positive impact for a contender once he reaches a buyout with the Rockets.